Welcome to The Full Nelson. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my number one recommendation for a 22 long rifle calibered handgun in the year 2024. I have owned Browning Buckmarks, Ruger Mark IVs, Taurus TX-22s. I have experience with Ruger SR-22, the Walther P-22, um, most of the, the main 22 handguns out there that people would be interested in, I have experience with. I also have shot a lot of 22 revolvers and things like that. And of all of those 22 caliber handguns, this Taurus TX-22 competition is my number one recommendation. It's my favorite one by far. I have sold off most of the other ones, and today I'm going to explain to you why. So the first thing I want to start off with is the optics mounting system for the competition model. Specifically, I really enjoy because it is a non-reciprocating portion of the firearm. It's mounted directly to the barrel. You can get a piece of Picatinny rail like this and mount it, or it also comes with an optics plate for your more traditional handgun type optics. I'm running a Sig Romeo 5, which is a closed emitter red dot on this setup. I own like 12 or 14 of these things. I've never had one break. I put them on everything. They have like 50,000 hour battery life and it works really well on this firearm and they're very inexpensive, like $100 or so. I've even seen them as cheap as like $80 some of the, sometimes on sale. But anyway, so I like the optics mounting setup on this particular firearm compared to something like the Sig P322, I think is what it is, which has to be has to mount the optic to the slide. I prefer the optic not to move with the slide. So, like the optic mounting system, I like the weight of this gun. It's pretty light compared to like a Browning Buck Mark or a Ruger Mark IV um, because the slide, I believe, is aluminum and then the frame is Palmer. I like the ergonomics of the firearm. It feels really good in hand. Um, in fact, I like the feel of it in hand better than any of those other firearms that I've used. It feels more like a full-size handgun, and it has a much more ergonomically contoured grip than something like a Glock or, or most of those defensive carry firearms. Um, capacity of this firearm, this is one of the biggest selling points for me. I don't know why Ruger and Browning won't get with the times and make a 22 that holds more than 10 rounds. But Taurus made this gun and it comes with 16 round magazines, which is awesome. You can also, from Tandem Cross, get base pads for these that will allow it to hold 20 rounds total. And so the capacity of this thing is just awesome. 20 rounds in a semi-automatic 22 is great. Um, once you get used to shooting that many rounds in your 22, you'll never want to go back to 10 rounds because the amount of shooting for the time that you spend reloading is it's just much nicer. Also, the magazine design itself, it's a lot easier from what I've seen to load these magazines quickly than it is for me to load a Ruger Mark IV or a Browning Buckmark magazine quickly, and that's because they've got that thin little single stack design, and it's just not real conducive to loading quickly. This is more like a Smith & Wesson M&P, a Glock, your, your standard carry, carry firearms type design. So capacity is a huge selling point for me. That's probably one of the biggest things that caused me to, over time, ditch my Buck Marks and my Ruger Mark IV uh, and some of the other 22 handguns I've owned for this. So ease of maintenance is another thing. Cleaning this thing, if you've seen the Ruger Mark IV takedown, that was a big selling point because people hated cleaning the previous generations of Rugers, the Mark Ones, Twos, Threes. Some of those were a huge pain in the neck to clean. The browning buck mark can still be a pain to clean. If you're just doing the light cleaning, it's not bad, but if you're doing a thorough cleaning, it's a pain. This is just like cleaning cleaning a Glock or Smith & Wesson M&P. You've got the little tabs here, dry fire the thing, slide comes off, very easy to clean. So ease of maintenance is another big selling point for me. Reliability. This is the most reliable semi-automatic 22 I have ever owned. I bet I've run 10,000 rounds through this gun and if I had to throw a guess out there of how often I experience a malfunction, it is probably once every anywhere from 300 to 500 rounds I may be run into a malfunction with this gun. It is very, very rare. And as far as how frequently I have to clean this gun to keep it running, my Browning Buck Marks I'd have to clean probably every four or 500 rounds or I'd start running into some hiccups. 
This gun, I'm running 1,500 to 2,000 rounds between cleaning. I just run it until it is absolutely filthy and it just keeps running. In fact, when it gets filthy, sometimes you can just switch over to something like a Gila Super Extra and it'll just keep running. I, it's, it's just very, very reliable. So I love it for that reason. Um, the price of this firearm is another good selling point. These things retail for... 360 up to about $450 for the competition model, maybe 375 to 450 for the competition model, depending on if you get the SCR model that comes with the muzzle brake from Tandem Cross or if you just get the plain model with no muzzle device. It just depends on what model you select. So the price is great. Uh, browning buck marks for the nicer browning buck marks and for the nicer uh, Ruger Mark IVs, you're going to be looking at 475 to maybe 575 price range. Let's see, what else do I have on here? Aftermarket support. Um, these don't have as much aftermarket support as something like maybe a Ruger Mark IV, but they also don't need as much aftermarket support. These come with a better trigger from the factory than a Ruger Mark IV does, by a long shot in my opinion. They do have a lot of pre-travel. People who complain about pre-travel, I don't understand it because you shoot to reset. The only time pre-travel matters is your first shot. You pull to the wall, pull the trigger. Every, se every sequential shot after that, you just let that trigger go to reset, and that's all the farther that trigger's gone. People act like you got to go the full length of that trigger every single shot, and you don't. Um, so for people who actually understand how to properly run a semi-automatic handgun, you shoot to reset. The pre-travel thing is not a big deal. Um, it does have more over-travel than something like a Browning Buckmark and some of those other guns, but I haven't found that to be an issue. In fact, I find that I, in terms of trigger performance with this, I'll get back to the uh, aftermarket support in a minute, that I can shoot this gun much faster than I can shoot a Browning Buckmark or than I can shoot a Ruger Mark IV. Even with a really nice trigger in a Ruger Mark IV, I can still run this faster because this reset actually helps you a little bit, kind of like a Glock reset helps you shoot a little bit faster. Um, so I find I can shoot it faster now. In terms of precision shooting or accuracy, this gun um, compared to a Browning Buckmark with a spring uh, trigger spring flip modification or then a Ruger Mark IV with an aftermarket trigger, um, this is going to be more difficult to shoot precisely than those guns are when you're talking about aftermarket or making modifications unless you make modifications to this. And that's where I want to get into the aftermarket support. Tandem Cross and some of these companies are offering aftermarket sights, base pads that add capacity, or trigger springs. And you can get a trigger spring for this gun that will lower the pull weight down to like two pounds or something like that. And it costs you $13 or $18. If you want an aftermarket trigger for a Ruger Mark IV, you're going to be spending 150 to 250 bucks for a decent aftermarket trigger. And I don't know of any options in between aftermarket and stock trigger for a Ruger Mark IV that are going to put you in the realm of what you're going to get out of this for the money that I just described, $12 or $18 spring. The other thing is uh, the Browning Buck Mark, um, you really don't need an aftermarket trigger on that gun. If you just do that little spring flip thing, you're going to be in the same realm of what this is uh, with no additional cost in terms of pull weight and it's going to have less pre-travel, less over-travel, all of that. So the Browning Buckmark trigger is phenomenal from the factory. I just find that I personally can't shoot it as fast and I think that might just be the trigger reach, how far forward my finger has to go to reach the trigger and where the trigger breaks. I feel like in a Browning Buckmark it's too cramped and that slows me down. So anyway, accuracy even for precision shooting, I think that this gun does much better than people give it credit for. The problem is, is people are putting in $200 aftermarket triggers in their Ruger Mark IV, and then they're like, oh yeah, I can shoot, you know, really tight groups with that gun, and they're comparing that to this with the stock trigger. If you make modif modifications to this trigger, I think you're going to find that it will rival the performance of those other firearms I've named. So for all of the reasons I've just named, um, plus the fact that it looks awesome and makes an amazing suppressor hose. But the two biggest selling points for me of all the things I mentioned are capacity and reliability. Uh, this is my number one recommendation for a semi-automatic 22. I just love these things. The only con that I have found with this that is an annoyance that I need to solve is once you get up into the 10,000 round territory or however many rounds I've run through this a lot, 
uh, these roll pins that they've installed will start to walk slowly. You'll shoot a couple hundred rounds and that roll pin will start to protrude a little bit. And I just take something and push it back in or push something against there to push it in. I suspect there, I could push those in and feel an epoxy or super glue or something in with those roll pins so that they're more bonded and you could still take them out if you need to take them out. I don't have any intention of doing that until you know I've got to replace extractor springs, any of that. Um, that might resolve that issue, but that's the only hang up that I have found on this particular firearm. Anyway, I love them. Taurus TX22 competition model. I recommend this model specifically and not the non competition model. And I also recommend that you buy the model that comes with 15 round capacity or 16 round capacity from the factory, not the ones that only come with 10 round mags, unless you live in a state where those are prohibited, obviously. Then you're just going to have to deal with you know that situation and if you live in a state where you have 10 round capacity that might change the equa equation quite a bit for me that's where uh you know i i'd say well maybe the ruger mark four and the and the buck mark you know they're all on the same level in terms of capacity but when you can get double the capacity in a gun like this that's a that's a game changer for me plus the better reliability over those other two firearms and and longer intervals between cleaning. Anyway, that concludes my, my rant, my recommendation about this Taurus, Taurus TX-22 competition. If you guys have any 22 handguns that you really like that you would recommend to people, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. If you found this video at all helpful or informative, please like, share, and subscribe. That makes it so that we can produce more content like this. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.